Hello everyone, today we would be talking about broadband's filter model. But before that, I would just like to talk about theories of selective attention. So, mainly there are two uh, broad divisions, which is early selection theory and late selection theory. So, the broadband's filter model actually falls under early selection theory. With broadband's filter model, we also have treatments attenuation model. For lead uh, selection theories, we have Deutsch and Deutsch and Norman. What Ulrich Neisser did, that he did a synthesis of early and late filter models. Let's move on to broadband's filter model. So this was one of the first early theories of selective attention. And the filter model has also been related to what has been called the single channel theory. Now this has been based on the idea that the information processing is restricted. Information processing is restricted by channel capacity so what what is it saying it is that we filter information right after we notice it at a sensory level we notice is notice it at a sensory level and we filter out just after that and the filtering out process is done by the selective filter and multiple channels of sensory input reaches the attentional filter. Many. So here we are just talking about unattended and attended. But they are just given two examples. But there are a lot of stimulus always being bombard bombarding our sensory register. And when it reaches a selective filter, only one is able to pass. So, how uh, are these channels being getting uh, distinguished from each other? How do we know which is the one that we have to select? Which is the one that will pass the selective filter? Now, it is based on certain characteristic which Broadband talks about. They are loudness pitch or accent suppose you're watching a series on netflix in your room alone and suddenly a loud no noise uh, comes out first you were giving attention to that series but a, lo a loud noise uh, comes from your living room so you run to the li living room to see what is happening but there are a lot of other stimulus also going around in the environment. Maybe there is the uh, there is the series which is going on. Maybe there's a construction work going on outside. Maybe somebody is talking at the door. But which item, which stimuli passed the selective filter? The very, very loud noise which came from the living room because there are other things also, other characteristics of, uh, of the stimulus also. It might make you worry that what is happening. It was very loud. It had the ability to gain your attention. So it passed through the selective filter. Then... Further processing of the information would then occur only after the signal was attended to and passed through a selective filter. So after that stimulus is passed through the selective filter, the sensation is given meaning, which is perception. And other higher cognitive, it goes through higher cognitive processes as well. So then we talked about the single channel theory. 
so broadband is saying that uh, in order to avoid an overload in order to avoid an overload in this system the selective filter could be switched to any of the sensory channels the selective filter could switch to any of the sensory channels means it could switch it would can it could cancel any of the stimulus which it which it wants to avoid an overload suppose i'll give you an example if you are studying there might be so many stimulus coming around like i gave you an example before maybe there's a construction work maybe a birds are chirping outside very loudly maybe if you are studying early in the morning the birds are always chirping um there is someone talking at the door the tv is on so much stimulus is coming on but you have to concentrate on your studies so the selective filter is cancelling out all the other stimulus and only your studies are passing through the selective filter and going through other perceptual processes moving on um so one thing we have to talk about that uh, how did broadband test this theory we have to talk about the experiment he used the experiment broadband used is called the dichotic listening task so what is happening in dichotic listening task he he used this to test filter theory now what is happening is that the subjects are presented with two messages in their different ears left ear right ear so one type of message is coming to the left ear and another kind of message is coming to the right ear the instruction was that they had to shadow the message in one ear shadow what is shadow listen shadow means listen and then you have to repeat this is called shadowing so in the classical research what happens is that the people noticed very little amount of the unattended ear this was being unattended so very little was heard from the unattended ear what they saw is that when the language was turned from english to german this still did not in the unattended ear this still did not listen to the unattended ear they did not their attention did not get diverted to the unattended ear but when the voice changed from male to female then they could understand that that there is some changes in the unattended ear so this this actually says that the this stimulus is actually stronger than this one then so in general people understood that uh, people can process only one message at the time that's fine but there are some instances when people can process more than um, i mean people can process the unattended message people can process the unattended ear when does it happens it happens in three scenarios both messages are presented slowly if both messages are presented slowly then they are able to 
then they are able to process them. They have the time to process them, process both of the messages. The main task is not challenging. Now the task of shadowing is pretty challenging. Challenging, sorry. Ha, yes, the, the, the task of uh, shadowing is pretty challenging because you have to hear and repeat. Hear and repeat means that the message is going through the working, uh, working memory system. Uh, short term memory basically and there is some kind of rehearsal is happening that's how they can repeat it so the main task if it is not challenging like they just have to vaguely listen so that could be a less challenging task the third would be the third would be the meaning of the unattended message is immediately relevant now immediately relevant means suppose the name of the person is suddenly in the unattended year the name of the person is said then it is seen that there attention goes to the unattended ear. This phenomena is actually called is actually called the cocktail party effect. And this was given by Colin Cherry. This was given by Colin Cherry and uh, what he said, he did his uh, studies and the findings were that sensory information sometimes may be noticed by an unattended ear and two things, uh, unattended ear if it has a personal meaning and if it does not have to be processed el elaborately if it has a personal meaning and not elaborately processed. So the information which would require higher perceptual processes it would not be it would not be attended to so and in the in the area of cocktail party effect there is another person who has done a great uh, amount of work which is neville more another person um uh, so basically, again, if I have to repeat, cocktail party effect is when in the unattended year, if uh, some personally important message, not just your name, maybe your school's name, maybe your father's name, your mother's name, or your parents' name, or anybody which is personally related to you, any word which is personally related to you, are the, those messages are actually very powerful and they break through the filtering message of uh, sorry filtering mechanism this is the cocktail party effect so moving on there was another study by wood and cohen also on the party uh, cocktail party effect they found that one third of the participants uh, reported hearing their name in the message but but uh, the question arise that what about the two-third of the time so it was uh, concluded that the ecological validity of the inv of the experiment might not be very good now what is ecological validity 
it means that it might not be able to be replicated in the real world in the real world there are a lot of things happening together at the same time and in the laboratory everything is controlled so the ecological validity might not have been great that's why only one third of the time uh, people could hear their name and two third of the time they, they missed so in short this was your This was your broadband filter model. Now, one another thing is that the broadband filter model has been called the bottleneck. Bottleneck model. What is bottleneck? So I have to say bottleneck is this. So this is the filter. So many stimulus is coming, but only one is passing through. So this is the bottleneck theory of attention. So this was all about Prodbin's filter model. I hope you understood. And if you have any questions, I'll leave a link down below where you can send that to me and for this whiteboard i would give a link down below thank you so much for listening